my mom. This is going to be a tape of Lisa's funeral. It is, today is uh, September 23rd, Thursday. I just put new batteries and a cassette tape in here. I just want to let you know that I know you can't be here. I'm not angry or anything. Um, and especially at the news, they will pay to her and trust you. Okay, I want to thank you guys for coming. But my mother said that my mother and all of them weren't able to come. But well, I want to thank you friends for coming and family. And especially I want to thank the new viewers here. Because you guys were not told what this to my life. When I went through the cards and all that, I saw the get well cards, the birthday cards, the Christmas cards. You guys were friends. So you guys have been helping me through this whole ordeal. Now I want to thank you all. I want to thank you for your family. My wife is a wonderful person, and you all know that. And I was hoping for her. Lord God, give me strength. Let the Holy Spirit speak now, Lord God, with my lips. Hold back the tears. Lord, let your word get out. I just thank you, Lord God, for our souls being saved and my daughter being saved yesterday. Lord God, just ask for strength. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Amen. I've got four scriptures here. I'm a Bible preacher, you ever known? in my life talks about me. Four scriptures that I think really value what happened in my life when I was through our marriage. The first place I like to turn to is Proverbs chapter 18. We read a daily proverb and my wife died on September 18th. And I read this. Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Nineteen years I had favor from the Lord with my wife. Nineteen years. I was hoping for 10 more, but she went home, God took her, because we paid herself, I got paid with her. I just want to thank the Lord before all, you, all her friends, all the family, I want to thank God for giving me favor with that woman. She was a wonderful woman. You know what? I did 19 more years if I could with her. 19 more years. And we were faithful to our vows. Death did do us both. And as you know, she died in my arms. I want to give her a kiss. I told her, I said, I'm going to rub my beard into your face. I want you to hit me. Because she was not with her. I was trying to knock her out of what she was doing. And I want to give her a kiss, put my arm around her. She took that last breath. That's how I wanted it to be. I know she was hating. 1013, the first Corinthians. She had on her, on her care page, you know, that's a cancer website that she had and maintained. And on that cancer website she has, there has no temptation taken you by that step has come into man, but God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will which temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And you, say, you may say, Pastor Hayward, Brother Hayward, Mr. Hayward, we pray for Lisa to come home. That's what you ask. She did go home. God answered our prayers. The best part of the prayer was, He knew the better home for her. She was saved. She believed the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, and God took her home. He gave her a way out. And she's not suffering no more. There's no more cancer where she is. There's no more hospitals where she is. I preach faith. I preach the gospel. My wife is living it right now. She has no more faith. She's with Jesus. I gotta keep on going. I'm jealous. But God spoke the time that when she was suffering, she told Courtney and my mother all the troubles. She never told me. But she loved me, she cared about me. And it's the best thing that happened. You see, that's, that's kind of cool to say for a few. Now when you believe Jesus Christ is your savior, it's not. Because David said when his little boy died from Bathsheba, he says, that child never come to me. So I will go to him. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to have my wife come up to me when I die one day. I'm right here in this class. She's going to come up and put her arms around me like we always did. And she's going to bring me to my Savior. And my grandmother, my grandfather, my brother, all the saints I've known that's come and gone. Third place I have to turn. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 
that we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible, we shall be changed. My wife is going to bless me that day, that body. So one day the Lord's going to call that trumpet what we call the rapture, and that grave is going to be opened. And her body is going to go flying through the air to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us we're going to get a new body. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the say that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. That was swallowed up at Calvary's cross. Oh, death, where is thy sting? My wife was stung by death. I'm going to get a death certificate and may 99% chance of going to say cancer. That's wrong. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. My wife died because of, because of sin. In Genesis 3, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. If that would never happen, there would be no funeral today. We'd be still living in perfect harmony with God. But sin is why my wife died. Sin is what we all are. We are all sinners. And they where is that victory? You know the rapture could happen right now. There is a funeral. And if we that are saved will never taste death like Lisa has. I will be able to tell Lisa, ha, you have death, I never faced it. The sin of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The first seed of God has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you right now, there's only one way for victory. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at this graveyard, I tell you, everyone in this graveyard is a Bible believer today. There's only two places you can go, heaven or hell. The Bible says you must be born again, and I was there the day my wife got saved. I was there when my son got saved. I was there yesterday when my daughter got saved. It's a wonderful thing to be saved. It's a wonderful thing to be born again. But my wife is to say anything right now. She said, come join me. But there's only one way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. Don't pray for my wife no more. You can't. She's going home. Pray for us. We've got a lot of decisions we've got to make right now. And the last place I'd like to turn, this is my life first. When the doctor told me I had uh, problems with my lungs, proved them wrong, Titus 2.13 says, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm looking for that day. I'm looking for that day. She doesn't have to. She beat me. Be all of us, I say. So I love the Bible says. He says, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That He was virgin born. That He died on that cross for our sins. They buried Him. And He arose from the grave. I can't describe the peace that I have right now. Through this whole thing in my life. But if she could say anything, she had fine friends, fine relatives. I didn't know the other day that she was calling my mom all the time talking to her. She was a wonderful wife and a wonderful mother. And as I said, we were then married November 2nd, 19 years. I thought one of 19 years ago. There's not more. It's a wonderful thing to be saved. It's a wonderful thing to have you folks here for my wife and praying for my wife through all this ordeal and praying for we have people in Poland, Romania, Africa, uh, Florida, Oregon, Nevada, Massachusetts. She had people praying all over and most of people who never met. But your prayers have been answered. She's gone home. I just want to thank the Lord. Lord God, help this family. Strengthen us, Lord. I pray for Wally, Lord God, that the death has happened to him and his family, Lord, Lord, and now his daughter. I pray for my children, Lord, Lord, that you help me be the parent, to be the father, and Lord God, the ministry decisions I have to make. And all this, Lord, I just bless your holy name. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Now, I don't know if there's anybody who would like to come up who's got any words, express their friendship, their love for Lisa. Come on up.